ahead and open up in a word of prayer. Lord, we love you. We are so excited that we get to come together again yet another week and worship you. Lord, I pray as we go forward, as every week, we pray that we just set aside what's happened before we got here and what's going to happen afterwards and just take this moment right here and make it all about you from the time we worship your holy name to your word that it sinks into our hearts. We love you, Jesus, in your name. Amen. If you're new here for the first time, whether you're out here in our congregation or watching uh, live streaming, I want to say welcome to Glen Meadows. We're so glad that you're here. In the back of the seat in front of you, there are little connection slash prayer cards. And if you're new here, if you could grab one of those cards, fill it out, and then put it in one of the towers to the front or the back of the auditorium, we would greatly appreciate it. As we say every week, this is our way of giving you a call later on, asking if you have any questions, and telling you how glad we were that you were here to join the Glen Meadows family in worship today. We have just a few announcements, so we're going to go through them as quickly as possible so that we can hear from Ashley about VBS and what's going on there. But before we do, a couple things. First of all, uh, last week we ran out of calendars. But the good news is we do have more calendars back at the Connections counter in the foyer, so go ahead and pick one up today. It's got all the main events that are going on throughout the year, and you would put it on your refrigerator, on your wall, or your, your cubicle, or your office at work, wherever you want to put that, go ahead and just grab one. It's free for you to know what's going on. Second is we're getting ready to go into summertime again, and there is a ton of stuff going on, so you want to check the ministry guide if you've got kids students, or if you as an adult want to volunteer, there's great opportunities. One of those opportunities is Kids Eat Free. That runs from about July 7th to August 13th-ish. And um, what they do there is they go out to the local community and they feed the kids in those communities every day of the week. Why is that important? Because a lot of times we tend to forget, as we say every week, we tend to forget that there are needs in San Angelo in as much as there are needs anywhere else around the world. And it's our opportunity to show the love of Christ through our serving and reaching the younger generation. So if you want to volunteer, you can get a hold of Becky Bookter or you can email us at lifeatgmbc.org and we will gladly forward that message to Becky and she will contact you. Now, also, men, finally, we have coming up Promise Keepers. Now, if, uh, if, you're, if you're a guy out here today and you're wondering what is Promise Keepers about, James Albright did a great job at Bacon Burgers and Bluebell uh, the other night, and he presented to us the importance of this. Well, to, to me, it's this. I look forward to worshiping with a group of men from our church body along with another 99,000 people or men worshiping God. And why do, why do we do it? Man, we do it because God has placed us in leadership, and we need to be able to lead in our families and lead wherever God places us. And this is a moment for us to reset why are we here, what is our purpose, and how do we move forward missionally on board with Christ. So if you want to register and join, it'll be a great time. Prices, registration, hotel room details, all of that is online. Go ahead and take a look, and we pray that we can get 100 men from Glen Meadows joining us in that journey in July. Now, finally, we want to talk to you a little bit about VBS. And so we figured the easiest way to do it is bring up the VBS professionals. How many years have you been doing this? Um, a little over five years. Wow. Well, tell us what we need to know. Thank you. Yeah. have almost 400 kids already registered, so we're looking to have our biggest VBS yet, so we're really <coughs> excited. Um, also, if you are interested in volunteering, we would love for you to volunteer. We need um, adult and youth volunteers, so there's room for everybody. Um, you, and also, if you aren't available to volunteer, you can also sponsor a child by um, paying $10, and it covers their t-shirt and just their fun week. So we would love for you to sponsor more than one if you can, or just one, or if you can just commit to pray. We would love that. So we're excited. Thank you.
Let's let's continue to sing together. All right, guys, you sing with me. I want to move so you can move. Come and do what only you can do. I want to live in expectation of your kingdom breaking through. Of your kingdom breaking through. Sing my hands. My hands are open. My heart is free. Open the heavens. Rain down on me. Fall down on me. My hands are open. My heart is free. It's good to be together on a Sunday morning. Let's go to his word this morning. We're in Ephesians chapter 2. Starting in verse 4, Paul says this, But because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ, even when we were dead in transgressions. It is by grace you have been saved. And God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus in order that in the coming ages he might show the incomparable riches of his grace expressed in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. This is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. This is the word of the Lord. That word grace is such an interesting word. The word in the Greek is charis. It just means unmerited favor. When we talk about God's grace, we talk about his tremendous favor towards us. And here the scripture is saying, look, there's going to come a day in the coming ages where you're going to see the fullness of that. So the Lord has saved us, and we know that, and we experience that now. 
but there is coming a day where we will see, be seated with him in his place, if you will. And we will see God's wrath poured out. We'll see the fullness of God's wrath and we will see the fullness of our pardon. For the scripture says, there is no condemnation for those in Christ. And even though we value God's mercy and we value his grace, in the coming ages, you will see the complete fullness of that. And we will see that our Lord is good, that our Lord is kind, and that his grace is rich. Let's bow our heads as we reflect upon the passage this morning. Lord, we thank you for your word. We thank you, Lord, that you have covered us with your grace and your mercy. Because of that, Lord, we are your children. And Lord, we understand this and we are grateful for this, Lord, but we understand there will be a day that we will see the fullness of these things. And Lord, just as we gather this morning, we simply say this, thank you, Lord, for saving us. Thank you for redeeming us. Thank you, Lord, for dying for us. Thank you for the newness of life that is now ours because of your sacrifice. It's because of these things, Lord, that we sing. We are mindful of your great work. And Lord, with hearts of gratitude, we sing your praise. Lord, rejoice in the singing and the worship of your people. And it's in your name, Christ Jesus, we all pray. Amen. Let's continue to sing together. Praise to the King of Kings. 
may be seated and let's pray. Lord, just thank you for today and Lord, thank you for opportunities for us to live in a great country that we have here, that we can gather together and we can worship freely. Lord, thank you for the sacrifices of the men and women who have gone before us. Lord, help us to remember them and to live a life worthy of that sacrifice. Above all things, Lord, thank you for your sacrifice on the cross and that you prepare a way for us for eternity. Lord, you are so good to us and we don't deserve it. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Man, I'll tell you, that's the best magic trick I can do. I close my eyes, I start praying, people disappear, a bulletproof podium shows up magically. It's just the greatest thing ever. I wish I could do that with bills at the house, too. If bills at the house work like that, I would be like David Copperfield or something. So today, I'm Chris Aronima, I'm the Life Group Pastor here. Uh, pastor Mac is on sabbatical. So I would ask for y'all to be praying for Pastor Mac and his family while they're away. Um, this gives them a time to connect with the Lord, to refresh, and to be coming back to us fully charged. So please be praying for him and his family. I'm going to be going through a portion of Ecclesiastes. So if y'all will start looking for that, that's not, uh, that's not one of those Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. It may take a little bit to find it. Um, so I'll get to it about 16 minutes in, and we'll be done about 17 minutes in. So... Hold tight and we'll get started, right? Today is, tomorrow is Memorial Day, right? And it's a significant ho holiday or, or Memorial Day. It's a, it's a national time for us to set aside and honor those people who have given their life in the service of our country for us to live in the great place that we have now. For us to experience comfort and just an abundance of life. Uh, for safety that we can't even imagine, right? So... In, uh, in Romans 13, it says, pay your obligations to everyone, taxes to those you owe taxes and tolls to those you owe tolls, respect to those you owe respect, and honor to those you owe honor. So today, we're going to honor those that have given the ultimate sacrifice for our freedoms that we take for granted today. As an American, I am a proud American. I love our country. 
I love our country. There are three things in my life that really get me emotional. One is my family. If we start talking about my family, I get emotion like you. It'll make my eyes leak, right? When it comes to our country, that's the second thing right there. I'm so glad to be an American. And the third is when we talk about our Lord and Savior. You get an opportunity to talk about that, and he stirs your heart. It'll cause my eyes to leak. When I hear victory stories about how God has worked in people's lives, it causes emotion to swell up inside of me. But patriotism didn't just start at birth. I wasn't like, yay, I'm an American, and I love America. Because at that time, you don't know anything, right? But through life, I've learned lessons that have taught me uh, what it meant to be patriotic and what it meant to give respect where respect is due. My first hard lesson at patriotism, I was probably about third or fourth grade. My mother is 5'1", and um, sweet lady, taught 50 years in the school district. She is, she's a pillar of the community, right? So about third or fourth grade, I'm standing next to her, and we're, we're singing the national anthem. And with the most horrible, worst Mexican accent I could render, I'm like, Ho, Jose, can you see? And I said, yes, man, I can see very good. Whap. I can only remember one time my mom slapped me in the face. It knocked the taste out of my mouth. I mean, like, cue, cue the stars and stripes. I'm seeing stars. I'm feeling stripes. It was, it was a horrible day for me. But I learned right then that there is a price for patriotism right there. Okay, my mother taught me a lesson. Absolutely right. She was on point. That changed my trajectory in life. I will never do that again. In fact, I have very, very rarely even talked about it, and I certainly wouldn't sing it now like that because I love our country, and that was instilled in me at a young age. I've had the opportunity to travel outside the country. If you love America, you will love it even more when you leave America, okay? If you take for America for granted, go pay the hundred and something dollars, get a passport, and cross the border. In the amount of one bridge, life changes dramatically. I, I understand why people want to come to America, and unless you ever step across there and put boots on the ground there, there is a sense of loss of security. There's a, there's a sense of loss of hope. Um, it's, it's not a financial thing necessarily. It's just you know what America represents and how great it is. And we have the opportunity here just to take that for granted or to turn around and abuse the rights that we have now and disrespect those that have paid the ultimate sacrifice. So today is for those. It's for the men and women that have given the ultimate sacrifice for us. They have given their life. But it didn't start out at just their life, right? They started out by enlisting. They started out by going to, to a boot camp and stuff like that. They gave up things before they gave up their life. They gave up their freedom. They gave it up for honor. They gave it up for their families. They gave it up for their brothers and sisters. They gave it up for the men and women that were standing shoulder to shoulder with them. They gave all of that for others. They may have known the big picture, and they may have known just the ideas and the plans for that one specific battle, but they don't know what all of the other things are that accumulate to what great a country we have now. As Christians and as believers, we know the big picture. And we know that Jesus is coming back for us today as believers. We know the big mission, but we have this little portion that we're responsible for to do our best, to do our duty to God and country, right? We have this little bit, but we may not see all that's going on. These men and women willfully gave up their family, their comfort, their safety, the day-to-day -day special moments that they have with their families. They gave that up prior to giving up their life. See, ultimately... They wrote a blank check. Do y'all remember what checks are? See, first service remembered what checks were. Does anybody believe in, they remember what checks are? Okay, good. So check looks like this. If you've never seen one, it looks like that. There's three lines on that check. One says pay to the order of. The second line is the amount of that check or, or the cost for that check, right? And at the bottom, there's a place for a signature, right? These men and women who have given the ultimate sacrifice, they sign that check and they wrote, pay to the order of the United States, one great country. And that line was left blank, to be filled in with whatever. So this service is actually 
today and Memorial Day for tomorrow, this weekend is to honor those that life was written on that line. But we know that servicemen and women who are active now and veterans that have served in the past, they wrote that same check. It was just, or it hasn't been, or just wasn't cashed with life written on the line. See, the other blank, that blank could be filled with things like regret and sorrow. It could be filled in with an arm or a leg. It could be filled in with a shattered marriage or a distant child. It could be filled in with alcoholism. It could be filled in with the demons that they have to put to bed before they can sleep restfully at night of the horrors that they've seen and done. But today, the men and women who are active service now and those that are veterans, they have signed that same check. But the bill hasn't come due. The tab's not done yet, so they have not filled in what that line is yet. We still need to owe them honor and respect, right? But we can give that to them daily because they're still here. Today is in remembrance of those that we can't face-to-face thank. It's for the people that life was written on that line. See, with checks, really, really big checks, there's normally two lines at the bottom. There's someone that signs it, right? And then there's someone else who else carries that debt, that big debt. So when it comes to life, the soldier or the, uh, the serviceman or woman didn't just sign their name. Their families have signed that, that second line because it was such a large check. In honoring those that have given their lives, we're honoring the families that have also wrote their name on that line too because daily they are still paying the debt in sorrow and grief of the lost loved one that has given their life. We owe them, give honor where honor's due and respect where respect is due. Uh, Memorial Day is for us to never forget and never abuse the lessons of the sacrifices that were made for us. Our, our society has a tendency to abuse things, right? We take things for granted. Uh, but if we put it in the right perspective and make our lives worthy of that sacrifice, right? Um, we in America, we live in a great place. And every day, like today, we can give thanks that we're in a church amongst other believers and we have an opportunity to serve together, to love the Lord together. We have freedoms to go up and down the streets as we want we can enjoy life because of the sacrifices made for somebody else. So we know what those people died for. My question today to you is, what are you living for? What ultimately are you living for? So now, because it's 16 minutes in, we're going to get to Ecclesiastes. Okay, Ecclesiastes chapter 1 and verse 1 is where I'm going to start. It says, the words of the teacher, son of David, king of Jerusalem, Absolute futility. Uh, Some translations say meaningless, or they say vanity. Absolute futility, says the teacher. Absolute futility. Everything is futile. What does a man gain for all of his efforts that he labors at under the sun? A generation goes and a generation comes, but the earth remains forever. The sun rises and the sun sets, panting. It returns to the place where it rises, gusting to the south, turning to the north, Turning, turning goes the wind, and the wind returns in its cycles. All the streams flow to the sea, yet the sea is never full. To the place where the streams flow, they, there they flow again. All things are wearisome or worn out, is what, what another translation says. More than anyone can say. The eye is not satisfied by seeing, nor is the ear filled with hearing. What has been is what will be, and what has been done is what will be done. There is nothing new under the sun. Can anyone say anything? Look, this is new. It has already existed in the ages before. There is no remembrance of those who came before and those who come after. There's also, there will also be no remembrance by those who follow them. So basically what it's saying in doom and gloom is, hey, everything that we're doing now is not going to matter, Right? We're going to work hard, we're going to raise families, and it's, it's all going to go away, right? That can be depressing if you look at it that way. Say, God has blessed us with certain things, but we have to have the right mentality and the right perspective about things. All of this stuff is going to pass away. So what are you living for? In the next couple of chapters, uh, the writer, the author of this book talks about, of this chapter, excuse me, talks about um, 
living a life of indulgence. He had a lot of money, and he had a lot of land, and he had a lot of, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of stuff. And it never fulfilled, and it all went away. It's all fleeting. Uh, more stuff and more stuff and more stuff. So my dad passed away two years ago, and he amassed a lot of stuff. Okay, I had a house full of a lot of stuff. My sister had a lot, house of a lot of stuff. And all of his stuff, what are we going to do with? It's stuff. I tell you, if you want to get sad, go to an estate sale and walk through somebody's life. It's not their house. You walk through their life and you see everything that they have amassed in their lifetime. And they're selling it for pennies on the dollars or it's going to the trash heap. Because it goes away. The verse says, it says, when I consider all the things that I've accomplished and what I've labored to achieve, I find everything to be futile in the pursuit of the wind. There is nothing to be gained under the sun. And that's in chapter 2. But if we put our perspective on what is here and what is now and how we build our kingdom, it will eventually pass away. It will be gone. Some people may go, you know what, I need to pursue knowledge and to be smarter. Being smart is not a bad thing, okay? So I'm not discouraging you from studying and being smart. But is, is knowledge going to help change your heart and your mission of life? The head knowledge is good, but eventually it will fade too. It will be gone. It says, for just as the fool, there is no lasting remembrance of the wise. Since all the days to come, both will be forgotten. So eventually, amassing all of that knowledge and pumping ourselves full if it's not used properly, it's going to fade away anyway. We need to invest the things that are going to last forever. So some people may go, you know what? I'm not really materialistic. I haven't amassed a lot. This, this really doesn't pertain to me. And some of you may be in here going, you know what? I'm not pursuing a degree and I'm not chasing knowledge. So this really doesn't pertain to me. But everybody here has family. And this pertains to me. And I can ask my wife. She's a grandma. I can say, hey, what do you live for? And she goes, my grandkids. Right? I live to pay the Amazon bill that it comes with two grandkids. Okay? I mean, I'm making like monthly installments on that bad boy. Okay? It's okay to invest in your family. And that's very, very important. But invest in the important things. Invest in love. Because it is fading. It is fleeting. It will be gone. Verse 4 that I read just a second ago. It says, a generation goes and a generation comes, but the earth remains forever. And at the very end of what I was reading in verse 11, it says, There is no remembrance of those who came before and of those that will come after. There will also be no remembrance by those who follow them. I love my mother to death. My grandkids know my mother. There's a relationship, right? One generation from now, they won't even know my mother's name, right? She will be forgotten. My grandparents were dear to me. I remember them, but my daughter doesn't remember them, right? So one, two, three generations, it'll be gone. The memory will be gone. What is going to last forever? That's a great question, and I'm going to get to that in just a minute. I love it when I get ahead of my notes. So let's talk about work real quick, <laughs> okay? So people work, and they toil, and they toil to build. And we work to work to work to work to work, right? And that becomes a focus. Get up and go down and work. Get up in the morning, I don't want to. And then you go to work, and then you come home, right? But we know that even work and what we've amassed in it will one day be gone. It says in um, chapter 2, verse 18 and 19, it says, I hated all the work that I labored at under the sun because I must leave it to one who comes after me. And who knows whether he was wise or he's a fool, yet he will take over all of the work that I've labored at skillfully under the sun. This too is futile. So enlisting these things, and, and believe me, this isn't all of the depression that comes with Ecclesiastes, so please read further. But um, let me let you know about this. It doesn't say that this is absolutely worthless. This stuff are gifts from God. And it says if we have it to, for us to really understand what that means and un use it properly. It's not for us to eat, drink, and be married and just do whatever we want. It's for us to use it properly. And eventually it will pass away. You know, the American dream is let's have success and let's have money and let's have a large house and let's have a two-car garage and 2.5 kids and two dogs and an Instagram account with pictures all over the world about how we're living our lives at the very best it can be, right? It's okay to have that stuff because it is given of God. It's okay for us to enjoy that. 
But don't let that be the focus and center of everything in your life. When you get up in the morning, it's not, hey, so I can have this. When you, when you give and give to your family, let it be for the right things. It's okay to enjoy that. And believe me, I want you to enjoy the things that God's given us, right? If you, haven't, if you don't have the large house and the two cars and the 2.5 dogs or is it 2.5 kids and two dogs, whatever. If you don't have that great big American dream, that's also given to you by God. So enjoy that also. Philippians 4.12 says, I know how to make do with little and I know how to make do with a lot. And in all circumstances, I have learned the secret of being content. Whether well fed or whether hungry, whether in abundance or in need, it's the idea of being contented with what God has given us and to properly leverage that for the right reasons. If all of this is futile and it's going to be gone, then what lasts forever? Man, I'm so glad y'all asked. Love never ends. 1 Corinthians 13 says love never ends. This love is the same love that's written when it says God is love. Love never ends. God is love, right? It's also the same one that's used in, in John 15, 13 when it says no greater love than this to lay down his life for his friends. Those servicemen and women who have laid down their lives, it's that same love that God is love. It's that same love that never ends. Um, so we need to be investing in the right things. Spend your time and your money and all your efforts for, the, for what's going to last forever. Invest in your eternity, first of all, and invest in others' eternity. So how do we leverage that, right? See, salvation never ends. You can't spend all of salvation, and, and it never goes void, Right? I can share the gospel with somebody who will share the gospel with somebody. In fact, that's the reason why we're here now is because somebody started sharing the gospel a long, long time ago, and it never fades and it never ends. So start sharing. Um, share it when you're frustrated. Share it when you're at work, right? Share it when you're around your family. Share it while you're standing in line at Walmart when you're 15 deep and they only have one checker. I can stand there and be upset, right? Because I'm not getting paid full price to check my own groceries out. That really aggravates me, right? I can focus on that and the here and the now, or I can focus on eternity. Because the joker in front of me and the joker behind me, they're stuck too, right? That's a captive audience. If they want their persimmons, they're going to have to sit there and listen, right? So share. Use those opportunities with the right attitude and the right heart for us to share what's truly going to last forever. It's not futile, and that's love. See, the things we need to know about love is that Jesus Christ paid the ultimate sacrifice for us. We live in a great country because of the sacrifice of men and women, right? Eternity is available for us in heaven because of the sacrifice of God, that Jesus died for us. He was 100% man and 100% God. And the way to do that is to admit, to believe, and to confess. Admit that we're sinners. Man, I love that Max shares that we're all sinners and Everyone here, I'll let y'all know a little secret. It's full of sinners. Y'all are, the church is full of sinners. It's run by a bunch of sinners. I'm a sinner. You're a sinner. Don't you want to be? No, we don't want to be sinners, right? But the deal is, is, is every one of us are sinners. We have to admit that we're a sinner. We have to admit that we're not righteous, right? That Jesus Christ paid the price for us. That he, he was murdered. He died. He was buried. And he rose again. And he's coming back for each and every one of us. So our eternity is there by accepting him and confessing him as our Lord and Savior. It says he goes and prepares a place for us. There's eternity coming, right? And uh, it's coming in one of two places, heaven or hell. And the decision is there to accept that free sacrifice that he did for us. Um, we need to give honor where honor is due. So when it comes to the service of our country... Men and women have given their life for us to really, truly enjoy life here. A lot of times we focus on what's here and now and right in front of our face. Earlier I read just a little bit about love never ends. In verse 11 it says, when I was a child I spoke as a child and I thought like a child and I reasoned like a child and when I became a man I put aside childish things. Um, I'm not calling y'all children, okay? So when you leave here, don't go, man, I went to church and that guy called me a kid. I just know that if I don't pay attention to what I'm doing right here and then, 
I can easily focus on what's right here in front of me. The neighbor kid got a brand new Triceratops toy the other day. I happened to be over there. The kid couldn't even say Triceratops. Tri- I can't say it either. But um, <laughs> the Triceratops toy. And he's running around and he's so excited about it. He's tripping over things. Mom and dad are yelling at him to come over here. And, to, and he can't focus on anything that's right except for this right here. It's the coolest thing. He's interrupting mom and dad to open it and get it out of the package because he's got to have it right now. Well, that seems pretty absurd when we put our lives in that category. But it says right here, when I was a child, I thought as a child. And I'm not saying your children. And I can easily revert back to what is this right here that I'm paying attention to. As adults, we can sit back and we know that that triceratops is not going to bother. It's not going to be that important 10 minutes from now. Right for that kid. It's not going to be important three months from now, and it's going to end up being rubbish and trash. All the things that we have in our lives are right here. So let's focus on what the true is. What what should we focus on? That love lasts forever. So when it comes to the service of our country, men and women have given their lives so we enjoy here and now. And we take it for granted. But when it comes to the service of our Lord, have you filled in that blank check? Pay to the order of eternity and salvation, right? And that line is there. Pay to the order of the kingdom of God. That line's there for the cost, and you've signed your name to it as a believer. Sign my name for the cause of Christ right here. Have you filled that line in? If you've taken the time and you filled it in and said, you know what, I'll give up a Sunday morning, uh, maybe... 48 of the 52 weeks a year. I'll, I'll, I'll give that, right? So, so when those men and women signed up to be in the military, you know, they gave up, man, I'm going to have to do push-ups, right? <laughs> they gave up the fact that they're not going to be in a comfortable bed, you know? But they left that line empty until the tab comes due. So have you written in that, I will give up a Sunday service. I'll give up my time for a Sunday service. Or I'll give up a few minutes a week to pray. Or I'll give up a, an evening a week so I can go to life groups and be with other believers. Or, you know, I'll give up my comfort and maybe even a little bit of my safety so that way I can share Jesus with somebody. But have you decided to write a bigger check? Maybe you wrote on that check a larger amount. I'll give up my former identity. I'll give up my self-indulgent life. I'll give up my selfish desires. Is it going to cost me an arm and a leg? You know, what is that line for you? And have you left it truly blank? See, is it really a sacrifice if whatever we write in there ourselves, is it really a sacrifice if that is just vanity? It's just futile. Whatever we give, if it's all fleeting and it's going to be gone one day, is that futile, right? Is it really a sacrifice if there's no real cost to it? So is your check truly blank? If so, be ready because one day the tab's going to come due and something's going to be written on that line. And what's that cost going to be? So we can ask God to help us to remember to keep that line empty. That's a very big check, right? It ought to be a big check for the kingdom of God, right? People give their blood for our country. What do we give for the kingdom? Eternity is on that line. Remember I was talking about it being a big check and how there's two lines on that check, right? The serviceman wrote his name and the family carries the debt of that, right? When you sign that check, you're not the only one signing that check. Jesus has signed that check for you. His name's on that line too because he did not just give his blood, right? God gave his son for us, for eternity. We just have to leave the check open and blank. Put into perspective what truly is important. The things here that will fade away or the things of eternity and sharing love. So I encourage you, if you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, today's the day for that. Because he's already made the sacrifice and he's already given his life. To the servicemen and women that have given their life, we owe respect, right? Give God honor where honor is due. Give those men where honor Men and women, honor where honor is due. So let's pray. 
Lord, just thank you for today. Lord, thank you for your sacrifice. Lord, thank you that you remind us that everything here is just fleeting and the eternity is on the line. Lord, thank you for the men and women who have given for us so we can have safety and security and a great nation and wealth and abundance. Lord, help us to be content in the things that you've allowed us to have and content in the things that you've kept from us. Lord, help us to trust you more and more each day. For those that have not accepted, I pray that you just accept him now because the eternity is there. The price has been paid. The sacrifice is there. You don't get salvation by birthright. It's by acceptance. We're in a great country by birthright, and it is fleeting. It is futile. It will be gone one day. You must accept Jesus Christ. Lord, you are so good to us. Just give us an opportunity to share what is eternal, and that's your love. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Stand together as we sing. There's a place where mercy reigns and never dies. There's a place where streams of grace flow deep and
God bless you guys. You guys have a great week. You are dismissed.